Excellent. Welcome everybody to the Metasploit team demo meeting. Uh, this week I'm excited to be tag teaming this meeting with Alan Foster from the Scoundrels team in Belfast, uh, who they work on the Metasploit framework. Uh, so it should be fun. Let's, let's hop on in and get to it. So for the latest and greatest Metasploit that's been released, uh, first things first are new modules and enhancements and features. Uh, firstly, community member Eric Winter has contributed a new Pandora FMS module, which takes advantage of a command injection vulnerability in the events feature of Pandora FMS. This flaw allows users to execute arbitrary commands via the target parameter in HTTP POST request to the events API, uh, and we'll have a quick overview of this module later. Uh, community member Eric Winter has also contributed a post authentication exploit module for Centile Pro versions 8.8.2 .8 and below. Uh, this exploit can achieve system privileges by exploiting an unauthenticated command injection vulnerability. We'll have a demo for this as well. Um, thirdly, community member Houdini has also contributed a post authentication deserialization vulnerability module for some versions of Plex Media Software. Uh, on the Windows platforms. Uh, we have a demo for this too. And last, uh, our own Spencer McIntyre has contributed a new module for SAP NetWeaver Systems version 7.3 to 7.5, which allows for the creation of an admin user via crafted sub requests via an unauthenticated endpoint. And also a big thanks to Willview for reviewing and landing this module. And Spencer will also be demoing this. For enhancements and features, um, Brent Cook um, contributed a module which improves the check behavior by preemptively warning about a missing check method. And this happens before option validation occurs. So no longer will you have to run a module, uh, sorry, attempt to run a check module, find out that your options aren't valid. And then whenever you correct the options, it'll tell you, hey, but we don't actually support a check method. So for that, will save a lot of time. Community contributor Heinek Petrak added hash dumping to auxiliary gather VMware, VM Center, VM Der LDAP, which is pretty awesome. Community member Hoodie reorganized a number of auxiliary modules within Cisco, Juniper, etc., to be under the new folder of networking, which is awesome. And for bug fixes, um, Community member B calls added a feel with call from the check method inside an XM module, uh, which was actually causing the local exploit suggester to break. Um, so that now it fixes that. And community member Digital Combine updated the post multi managed pseudo fix uh, to fix support for passwords containing shell substitution and meta characters. Uh, so a bit of an edge case, but I'm sure it impacts a lot of people. And as always, uh, for full for the latest details on the recent framework activity, you can always check out the weekly Metasploit wrap-up blog posts on blog.rabbit7.com. And we really appreciate y'all um, who make Metasploit better through your contributions to the project. So thank you as always. And for the first overview of um, a module is Pandora FMS by Eric. Um, in the next slide, we can see uh, what Pandora FMS looks like if you're running it. Uh, specifically, the module to use is Pandora underscore FMS underscore events underscore exec. And it is a post authentication command injection vulnerability for version 7.0, uh, 742, uh, all the way up to 744, and potentially older versions. Um, you can very easily work out what version you're on from the bottom of the screen highlighted. Um, and on the next slide, you can see it run. Um, so again, using the module as expected, you can use the run command. Uh, this is post authentication, so you will need to supply a username and a password. And there's an additional tip saying that you can extract database credentials once you have gotten a shell uh, as demoed um, with the grep command with grep db pass to config.php. Um, and on the next slide uh, is a demo from Brendan on the Windows Plex on Pickle RC. We have a video for that, I believe. Hello. Good morning, Brendan. Good morning. Uh, this is a uh, exploit for uh, Plex server running on a Windows environment. In this particular case, uh, what it uses is when you upload a, a new library 
to the Plex server, it does it as a pickle format. And in that unpickling, there is a way to go ahead and execute a Python command. So as you can see, we're already configured here to use the Python payloads. Um, and right now I'm demonstrating that even someone who's been in the industry for a while can still mess up IP addresses. I've confused our host and L host and it'll be just a second while I fix those. Um, one of the most important parts of this is that uh, you're going to need a Plex token, which is available if you can sniff the wire uh, or if you have access to a PCAP on the machine that you are, that uh, has logged in successfully. So our host is set, L host is set, adding the Plex token. If you copy this very quickly, you can probably hack a machine that's sitting in an internal network and turned off. Um, so you might want to take that down for future. Uh, so now you can see everything's set up. We've got our callback ready and we run. One of the things that happens with this is once the connection happens, the service itself has to be restarted. Um, but when it restarts, we get our interactive shell right now. It just says, you know, we've, we've got the callback, we've sent the data through, um, and now we have to have the server restart the act, the service, not the machine itself needs to restart. Also my apologies for the uh, physical security. <laughs> Those dogs are really pumped about this exploit. They are, they really are. It's nice, I love it. <laughs> Boom. And there we go, we finally get our uh, session. And this was on a Windows 10 64-bit machine. Plex is a pretty popular uh, me uh, free media software as well. I, from my experience is that what you gather as well, Brendan? Yes, uh, there were several people that I was able to call on for help, even on our team. Uh, the other thing that I noticed is this doesn't, you don't need to have a paid account. The free account will work just fine with this exploit. Cool. Um, next we have Spencer McIntyre giving a demo of the SAP recon module. Thanks, Alan. Good morning, Spencer. All right. Uh, yeah, so this is a exploit for CVE 2020-6287, uh, which leverages an unauthenticated web service that is present within uh, SAP's NetWeaver component of multiple products affecting version 7.3 to 7. Point, excuse me, 7.30 to 7.50. So what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and we're going to utilize the web service to issue a job that we're going to leverage to add in an account. Now, this could be the PCK upgrade job. Now, this takes a few seconds because we actually have to pull the status from the server to get an idea for the status of the job. And once it has completed the action that is actually going to add in our Metasploit account, we're going to go ahead and cancel the job. Now we can see here that we we're able to log into the web uh, interface as the new Metasploit user. And we're going to jump over there to the configuration tab to confirm that not only was our user created, but it was created with the administrator role, thus giving us elevated access to the account. So we're looking ourselves up and then we can see ourselves, we have the administrator role assigned to us. Yeah, this, uh, this got a lot of attention, rightfully so, because it was a, a CVSS 10 vuln, um, which I think probably everybody knows, but if you don't, <laughs> this is a, a really big deal. Know. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I, I think the general guidance from uh, not just security solutions and vendors, but also um, folks like cybersecurity agencies and, and governments was that, you know, if, if this wasn't patched really quickly, um, customers and, and users should be looking for signs of compromise uh, and not, not just at, at patching. So um, it's really great that we can we can have a way to, to demonstrate risk. So thanks, guys. Awesome, good job. And for our final demo uh, is Shelby showing us the Centau Pro RCE. 
All right, so uh, this exploits an authenticated uh, command injection vulnerability in Zentel Pro. Uh, Zentel Pro is this project manager management software. Um, uh, yep. Uh, so basically, the vulnerability is again, it requires authentication first. Uh, but once you authenticate, you can uh, use the repo create functionality to uh, create a repo, and um, within that functionality, you can set a uh, path variable, uh, the client variable, uh, to your payload, which uh, then gets eventually uh, passed to an exec call, and you get command execution. Awesome. Super. Um, thanks very much, everyone. That's uh, everything from the Metasploit framework side of things. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Alan, and thank you, everybody who demoed. That was great stuff. Uh, and now we're on to an update on Attacker KB, the Attacker Knowledge Base where you can learn about and discuss which phones matter and why. Just visit attackerkb.com. We have a, a couple of demos today. Uh, we have some new functionality that's, that's landed recently. Um, and we'll start out with activity feed with James. Um, I'm actually doing this demo on behalf of Erin Blyweiss. She's the one who did all the work for this feature, but uh, she's out today. I'm just a monkey pressing buttons. I didn't <laughs> take no credit in any of this. So. Um, this is a really cool feature. I'm really excited about it. Uh, basically, what it is, is there's a new link up here uh, called Activity Feed that uh, is a list of all of the actions and content that has been created uh, for Attacker KB, uh, sort of chronologically. Um, it, right now, we're just showing uh, when users uh, assess or comment on something. So you can see uh, Spencer, um, Assessed uh, CVE 2020-1147. Uh, you can read his whole assessment here, you know, see everything. You can even uh, upvote it uh, or downvote it uh, if you feel so inclined. Um, and yeah, so this is like a one-stop shop where you can go view everything that, that's going on in Attacker KB. Um, it's uh, paged, so you can, you know, go on, add infinitum, infinitum um, the, uh, the, the, the events only go back to about where we deployed this feature. So it's not going to go back to, to the end of time. Um, we actually fixed a bug that was preventing some of these events from showing up uh, as part of this. Well, Aaron fixed the bug, I shouldn't say we. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, from now, from when this was deployed last week, everything should be showing up. But uh, from now, or from before that, there might be some stuff that's missing. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is really exciting. It's if you're just uh, coming to Attacker KB, you don't really know what to look at. This is a really good place to to go, just you know, see what's new. And this is only the beginning too, because right now we only have assessments and comments on here. But um, we're going to be adding like a topic is created or assessment or comment is updated. So um, as we roll those features out, there'll be more com uh, content to view here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's kind of seems simple, but uh, it, it's going to be a really valuable feature for just consuming content on Attack KB. This is awesome. Yeah. This is so you. great, you guys. Yeah, this is something we've needed for a long time, and uh, you know, I'm very happy that Aaron was able to get it in there. Wow, yeah. I, I just, that's all I have to say. This is so, <laughs> so, so valuable. This is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want to be able to see. <laughs> would would be interesting to see if this should be made kind of the default mobile experience too, you know? Um, I was wondering that as well. Yeah. That's I think cool. once we get the all of the content events in here, uh, I would think that would be a good thing to switch over to. Um, you know, we, who needs to see? Like, you can still view all the topics and stuff if you want, but really people come here for the content that, that it, experts are leaving. So. Yeah, um, exactly. It was more of a Twitter, like Twitter something. Yeah. Yeah. This is, brings a new meaning to doom scrolling. <laughs> 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 oh my God. It's, it's true. But like, you know, as long as you're doing it anyway, as long, yeah. <laughs> as, long as the things are happening, like at least, you know, you, you have some, some commentary on what they mean. Exactly. Um, I don't know if this is I don't know if this is the place for me to ask or, or not. Feel free to tell me to to hush up and I can just ask in a channel instead. But um okay. what what other 
it, can you give me a more specific example of the types of events that you were thinking of adding later on to this? Because I mean, this is just so valuable as it is that um, I'm wondering what the experience is going to be um, after you add more features to it. I know you said like when a topic is created. Yeah, topic created, topic updated, assessments or comments updated. Um, that one's going to be a little more uh, interesting. Like the updates are going to be a little, uh, we're going to have to do some filtering there because I, um, there's a lot of times people uh, write an update and then like, oh, you go back and change a character or something like that. So if you see like, you know, 15 entries here from Will Vu that he updated the same assessment was just changing like characters here and there. It's uh, <laughs> that's not going to be very exciting. So uh, we'll have to do some logic there. That's going to be a little bit uh, more work. Um, but yeah, created to topic created, topic updated. Um, I think we're planning on doing like a special uh, view for when a rapid seven analysis is posted. So not right. just when um, a topic is updated with a rapid seven analysis, it'll be like rapid seven analysis was posted for this topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, they, it's really, we've got a ton of possibilities here. So that's what's on our immediate backlog. Yeah. I'm, I was just sort of thinking of like, I don't know if any of the rest of you, um, look at, at Twitter for say like CVE 2020 searches. I'm totally giving away all of my personal, uh, <laughs> ball hunting logic here, but you know, the, the top, um, the top commentary is really what I, want in that view. And then sometimes there are, you know, bots that basically just syndicate all of the CVEs that are added, the hundreds of CVEs that are added every day. Okay. Like, oh, go away, go away. I don't want you. You're just clocking up my view. I want to see, you know, what researchers have to say about active exploitation or, you know, what has new POC out that we might need to take a look at or, you know, stuff like that. So um, I'll, I'll stop for today, but I, bottom line is this is awesome. Great work guys. I'm super pumped. Yeah, all credit to Erin. She worked really hard on this and got it out. It was awesome. Yay, Erin. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Thanks for showing that off, James. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. James and Kate, I think it would be also interesting to think about kind of the sorting criteria, uh, individual sorting criteria for the activity fit for people looking at this stuff. So if you guys are investing more time on in it from this, maybe, maybe it makes sense to keep in mind kind of the user uh searches and the user subscriptions and the user comments when you're sorting out the activity feeds as well um yeah that's a really good point it is something that we had we originally had planned for the feature but we decided to scale it back because we wanted to just get it out because we thought it would be really valuable to have in as soon as possible but yeah we, we talked about adding like filters so only show me uh assessments only show me comments sorting by you know upvoted or or most recently created or, or something like that. So yeah, that, that's on the backlog and we're definitely planning on doing that. Awesome. All right. And rounding out our demos today, uh, Matthew Kino is going to demo the vendor and product name metadata display and search filter logic that he added. All right. So what's the changes have been done at just providing users with a new way to explore and dive into the data that we have um, when they run a search, but also ex displaying the data and providing it for our API users, where we're now pulling in vendor and product name information and adding that to the topic metadata. So if you were to do something like search for a remote code execution, now we're going to get back a bunch of topics that have RCE in them. But let's say we want to explore this specifically down to a vendor. So if you go on the left-hand side and go down to the bottom, you see a vendor product uh, drop-down filter. If you're to type in Microsoft in the name, and then you can press return or you can press the apply button for this filter, it'll reduce those RC results to show those that have Microsoft as the product, uh, sorry, as the vendor name. Now, we have this is the first pass of this. We found some... There's some definitely holes with the data. Uh, we're only using one data source to enhance our topics with that information. Uh, so there's lots of room for growth here, especially as we you know, explore data lake concepts and um, pulling in additional data sources as well as sort of um, processing and analyzing those, uh, the data that we are bringing in to sort of enhance uh, that metadata. But we've got the feature here that'll let you explore it. 
um, if you were to click on one of those after you apply the filter. Okay, yeah, click that first one. And if you go to the vulnerability details tab there, you'll now see this new box appears that shows the vendors and products that we have information on being associated with it. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's really cool. That the, the so the also uh, note if you're using the API, the metadata field will contain a vendor's object that contains a list of vendor names and product names, which would contain those two values, uh, those sets of values there. Fantastic. That's very cool. That's awesome. So hopefully this will help our users explore the data in uh, new ways when they're running searches looking for interesting topics to either read up on or assess. Yeah, this is one that was definitely uh, requested quite a few times from community members too. Um, they are, is, is, I'm not gonna name names, but certain people saw a lot of value and be able to uh, filter this easily and, and find exploits specifically for what they're looking for. Thank you, Matthew. Absolutely. Excellent.